Hello everyone, this is Richard Pawson for the Pawson Report. It's 10.49 a.m. Eastern Time, Wednesday, December 18th. I want to give a little update of a recent trade we took for coffee using our business cycle model analysis. And what we've done is we felt like in early November it was not only putting in an L3 short-term cycle bottom, but also putting in L2 and L1 minor major intermediate cycle bottom. So we were turning bullish. We actually bought on the way up and had to write out a little bit of a loss here and then you can see it just spiked right up here and we recently took a very nice gain uh, out of coffee for this trade now what are these cycles and what are the trends well if you look at this little upside down U pattern that is a pretty much a picture perfect cycle okay uh, in terms of bottom to bottom and you can flip that over for a top to top you can see the top really didn't work but this is a little bit distorted of rolling over to the march for this continuous chart and it was a bit of a sloppy trade on its own. But at any rate, the L3 cycle really is uh, when you find a bottom monthly to a little less than a month. And it breaks in uptrends, downtrends lasting a couple days to a couple weeks. And you see with this one, it was almost picture perfect that it went up about the same amount of time as it went down and almost the same price uh, alteration or change. Okay, it's how we do business during the month. It's supply and demand. It's the bigger moves during the month. So if you're a short-term trader, you're interested in the L3. Inside of the L3 are little pops and drops every four, a few days. Those are actually the very short-term L4 cycle trends. And then you can break down to L5s all the way to L17 or something like that for all the intraday trends. There's just a huge amount of intraday trends in there. At any rate, uh, we use some of those to help us time this L3 trend. Mostly, we just use the L4 uh, cycle to time this L3 cycle. Now, the L3 cycles actually create a ratcheting process. Okay, so here's one, here's another, and it's kind of like taking two steps forward and one step back at times, and then another two steps forward, and another, and so ultimately it keeps moving higher for the larger cycle trend. Now, the larger cycle we were looking for is an L2 cycle. So here's an L2 cycle bottom along with an L1. It was to roll up or move up or trend up into an L2, and then it'll trend down into an L2 bottom, which we're currently uh, trying to forecast for January. We're just getting started on it. Don't have any downside objectives. Uh, probably best guess is it won't go under 105, but we'll see. And um, in addition, uh, this uptrend, okay, you can see we drew a time zone for a top. Inside of that, we then used a time zone for the L3 cycle. Okay, and inside of that, we draw a window reversal to try to be the most precise of getting something close to some kind of buy or sell signal you can use. Okay, so you would still want to try to come up with your own signal, try to figure out how to manage the risk. But what it's saying, this should be a high probability for a little top right now for coffee. And they should trim down in this L3, and this is the highest probability for a little pullback. But you can see we can actually allow for a large short-term pullback because it could very well be the first leg lower of this intermediate downtrend and it could turn more volatile. Now also notice we have a five day stochastic, so overbought, rolling over towards a sell signal. Price has been fluctuating just above the 100 day average and the five day average has come up to today's low. So I would be concerned violation of today's low, close under yesterday's low, something like that would also be violating these averages could be a sign that this five day stochastic is a leading indicator and it can be correct. Now in the past five, seven years I've come to the conclusion the five day stochastic is normally a little early uh, for an L3. So we still can't rule out a final pop up and I'd like to see how the commodities behave relative to uh, the Fed meeting today or the Fed announcement. Uh, so far I would say commodities are paying no attention uh, to what's going on. It's only a stock market and an interest rate affair. Uh, even the dollar doesn't seem to be paying attention to it. But at any rate, uh, we could get another pop here for coffee before coming down the time zones warning. We have a little more time and the larger time zone for the Alto is warning you might get a short term pullback but not much at all and then it just rallies again right into early January and that's your L2 top and I must admit there are some commodities suggesting that there shouldn't be a top to early January but for coffee it is possible it's time for this L2 top it's possible to start a correction now going into January now why do I call it a correction well as it turns out there's a more important long term three year cycle bottom probably in place with this L1 and if you're going to have a long-term bottom, you have to have an L1 bottoming with it. So this is like a clock with second hand, minute hand, and hour hand. They're all synchronized, sequenced, okay? But they can tell you greater detail if you look at all the different hands, right? And you can use it differently that way. At any rate, if this is truly a three-year and nine-year cycle bottom, 
uh, basically the three years suggesting we have a bull market next year for coffee. Uh, the nine years saying we have a bull market for the 2017 to 2019, but do not go out there and buy coffee and sit on it for that long. I think the derivatives market, the rollover, the commissions, the carry will eat you alive. Uh, and also I think that particular cycle is going to be very wide, broken, choppy, sloppy trend. But I suspect it to be bullish. I think you'll see uh, some nice pri high prices in 2017, 2019. And basically, this just falls in line with the macro economy cycles saying growing economy around the world and for U.S. till 2017, 2019. And it falls in line with the commodity indexes and the stock market to be bullish to 2017 to 2019. So this would be very interesting. This could be a very important uh, risk low here, very important development because we do have a high supply of coffee. But what it's suggesting is is things are starting to balance out where the supply side is saying, I don't have to panic sell here, and I can sell just for cash flow. I can return hand to mouth, and I don't have to forward sell and hedge. And the consumer side suddenly finds they can't really keep bidding lower and lower, and someone matches it and gives them the coffee. they got to bid it up a little bit from time to time. they got to work at it a little bit more. So it tells me, yes, it's time for the demand to turn around and pressure prices higher, even with high supply, and you definitely can do that. It occurs all the time, much more than what we're taught in textbooks. The marketplace doesn't get the idea that you can have so high supply and the price is low enough, it's not going any lower. And then they get caught off on guard. The price rallies for a while, then the demand gets even better and rallies some more. Then suddenly we find out the supply is not so tight or even have a supply complication, a problem, disruption, and then it gets even more bullish. So the bottom line is this could be a very significant recent bottom, very significant rally. I was very pleased with this short-term rally, good volume, and they really stung the short sellers on options. I was watching call options. They were more bearish on the options in the futures, and they stung them really good. So it seems a little strange now, after all this, to go ahead and turn bearish. But in fact, we've got to look for an L2 top and look for a pullback in coffee. Maybe something will go wrong, and I don't realize uh, how bullish it can be. But I say they pull it back get a correction, but by February, March, we're due for a more important L on top, so they'll probably put prices right back up to these levels, if not higher. But right to the moment, I'm feeling short-term and intermediate-term bearish coffee. I'm looking for a top here, and the market has served us well, so I guess we'll follow through and take that chance of looking for a top in coffee. Again, this is Rich Possum for the Possum Report. Check out our website at aeg-financial.com. If you want a, uh, a quantitative approach for the stock market uh, done by Matt Peters, as well as including some of the Possum Report, go to emptusreports.com. At any rate, check out our services here, commodities and the stock market. Thank you.